Hey guys, so today's video is kind of a biggie. I have been wanting to share this with you and just give you an update on what's been going on with me. If you've followed me for a while, you saw that I was in the hospital end of last year and I was just talking about all these different kind of crazy symptoms that I was experiencing and I promised to kind of give an update and I've obviously made some pretty big changes as I'm sure you can tell from the title of the video. And for those of you who are new here, hi, I'm Miss Crystal. I'm an attorney, a dark pop artist, and I'm just someone who has been fascinated about health and research a lot <laughs> when it comes to, you know, biohacking and the best diets and the best lifestyle and meditation and everything basically in between on how to extend life and how to live your best, healthiest, happiest life possible. So the purpose of today's video is to be transparent, share about what I've been through, what I've learned, but I also understand that maybe someone who found this video who's kind of new to this channel, there's going to be a lot in this video and maybe not everything will be applicable to what you're looking for. So I'll be sure to kind of section the video off into chapters and you can kind of go to the applicable section that you're looking for. Just look down in the description below. So I think a good place to start is just to start at the beginning of why I went vegan in the first place and really what then encompassed the next almost decade of my life being on a plant-based lifestyle. The simple of it is that I was just constantly sick and tired all the time. And it wasn't just being sick maybe three weeks out of every month. And so if I had like one good week, then that was kind of normal. And, and I knew that that was abnormal, right? So I was not only sick, but I had constant fatigue, right? So I was in bed a lot. And for someone like me, even, you know, when I was 16 and I started to kind of experience some of these symptoms, you know, I'm a very high productive person. You know, I was in college, I was competing in ballroom dancing, I started beauty school. And so having this kind of black cloud over me of just constantly being sick, constantly being tired was really tough. But on top of all of that, I was experiencing really bad gastrointestinal issues, right? So like from the top to the bottom, everything you can think of happening simultaneously. And so it was really difficult. And then all of a sudden food became this thing that was almost my enemy because I would eat, I would get sick, and it just felt like everything that I was eating was causing all of my symptoms to get worse. And so started the torturous journey of testing, going to every single doctor, and I call this kind of the blackout period. So for two years, I was going to a ton of doctors, getting a ton of tests, and it was just frustrating because everything kept coming back normal, or there's nothing wrong, we don't know why you're kind of having all these different symptoms. And it was when I finally got to this one doctor and she goes, you are going to need to do exploratory surgery because we don't know what's wrong, especially with like the gastrointestinal stuff. So we're going to need to basically cut you open and just see what's going on. And I remember thinking there's got to be a better way. There's got to be just some other alternative that I can try. So then I started looking into alternative medicine and then that led me to these plant-based lifestyles. And you guys have to remember, you know, over a decade ago at this point, veganism, even being vegetarian, all, all of it was kind of taboo. And so it was weird to me. And so I'd find these channels, which were a little more rare at the time, but there would be these different vegans talking about the lifestyle and how it cured their different ailments. And it really started to inspire me to think, well, this is something that could potentially work for me. And quite frankly, at some point you just become so desperate, you'll just try anything. And so I landed on this one YouTuber. She goes by um, freely the banana girl and she showed basically what veganism looks like and it was a very high well at least for her right there's different types of veganism I've tried all of them but her style was high fruit um, mono meals raw till four so basically you know eating very clean but very high volume fruits and veggies and so you better believe that I just kind of dove right in and I didn't look back. And after, you know, two years of really just this, this terrible, terrible phase in my life while I was trying to do a lot of different things after a week on this plant-based lifestyle, it was nothing short of a miracle that all my ailments started to clear up. And so you better believe that after that point, I became a very strong advocate for plant-based living. And that was, you know, basically my lifestyle then for the next nine years. And I noted earlier that I tried every type of vegan diet, right? Because there's like high fruits and sugars, right? Natural sugars, there's high fat, there's more of a balanced 
vegan diet and you know not every diet works for every person but I knew that this was something that had given me immediate results and looking back I now know why right because I, I'm a huge believer in plant-based medicine I think that we can get what we need medicinally from the things that we eat and that's the biggest thing that will help or hurt us in our daily lives and I think one of the easy explanations is that when you go on a cleanse and you go on some kind of elimination diet and you're not eating processed foods, right? You're not eating cheap carbs and intaking chemicals and pesticides and preservatives and all these really harmful things that they put in food, you're going to start feeling a lot better. And so I definitely can look back and understand why I felt so great. And then even for the following many, many years, continue to just feel really, really great on this diet. And as I noted, I became very, very uh, impassioned about the vegan movement and made it part of my platform. And I was posting every week about it and just sharing because my whole thing is just to be honest and transparent. A decade ago in particular that it wasn't quite as trendy as it is now. And so I definitely had some struggles as far as even finding food at restaurants, um, rejection from family and friends. And I ended up even losing weight because when you are doing a plant-based lifestyle, you get to eat a lot more volume, a lot more calories, and your body is going to be very efficient and your digestion usually gets a lot better. And so for all these reasons, it actually was great because all of a sudden I never had to worry about going to the gym. If I went to the gym, it was more about just, you know, being strong, but it was very easy to maintain weight. And for someone who has been in modeling and started to get into music videos with my music career and all that stuff, you know, it was great to really not have to worry about that. Whereas food had just controlled my life for so many years before. So I understand it sounds like I'm giving you a big sales pitch on veganism. Um, this is going in a different direction. So hold tight. Uh, you know, and the purpose is just to show you why I was just such a big advocate. I made shirts, I went to vegan festivals, I performed at vegan festivals. So then kind of moving into the next section of when did I start to notice some changes? You know, a few years into the lifestyle, there were some things that started happening. I definitely didn't equate it in any way to being related to my vegan lifestyle. And I just thought it was because I was stressed out. I started a law firm. I was, you know, hiring staff for the first time and starting YouTube channels and just doing all this stuff that was very high stress, but it just felt like I was having a very difficult time keeping up with what I had been able to do previously, if that makes any sense. But then some other stuff happened, right? So I noticed that my hair was falling out significantly and, you know, not just the hair on my head, but, you know, my eyebrows, my eyelashes. I developed cystic acne for the first time. So I was like getting adult acne and it was really tough because I had to be on camera every week. And although this is an aesthetic kind of concern, it definitely was rough because I would be dealing with this stuff for like months and it wouldn't go away. And I was having a hard time eating and hormonal imbalances started happening. And it kind of felt like there were multiple things that were starting to kind of break down. And of course, you know, I thought it was my fault, right? Um, and I think that for a lot of people who have been on a plant-based lifestyle have a tendency to look at what, a, what am I doing wrong, right? Because no one's perfect. And so maybe I'm missing something and you definitely want to supplement a lot when you are on a vegan lifestyle, for example, B vitamins, right? So B12 is a really important one for energy. We often get it from animals. So if you're not eating the animals, you want to make sure to supplement because your body doesn't just naturally make it. And you're going to be feeling really tired if you don't have you know, your B vitamins, but particular B12. And so a couple years into it, I started getting B vitamin shots once a week. And that seemed to help a little bit, but there was just something with my energy. I just, it just like every year, it started to teeter off more and more and more. And so whereas I used to be a person who would just, I woke up, get my morning drink, whatever that is, and just go for it, right into work, right into exercising. And that just was not happening anymore. And then earlier I mentioned the weight thing, right? So it was great early on because I could eat huge volumes of food. I mean, even the amount of like pasta that I would eat, it was just crazy. People were like, how do you even put that down? But you would be able to consume high volume food, calories, and you know, your weight would stay pretty stable. But over so many years, I started losing weight. And a part of it was just, it was hard to keep up with like 3,500 calories a day, right? Um, just to kind of maintain. And so I started losing weight. It's cool, you know, being kind of on the thinner side. I definitely started getting some hate. And it was the first time that I dealt with 
a lot of hate online of people just telling me all kinds of fun things. They'll always tell you fun things. That's just part of, I guess, being online. But, um, but it's something that I did note. And I remember that there was even this period where I made a commitment. I go, you know what? I just want to see. I'm having a really hard time putting on weight, but I just want to see if I can do it. And so for a limited period, I even went into like a junk food phase and I go, I don't even care what it is. It has to be vegan, but I'm going to put it down <laughs> and we're going to do this for like two months just to see if I could put on like five pounds. And it was really hard. And I was doing like 3,500, 4,000 calories a day. I finally started getting some weight, but obviously there are other consequences to eating really crappy for two months. And so I definitely had to deal with some of that stuff that happened. So taking that all together, right, some of the hair loss and the acne issues, you know, I thought maybe I was just kind of stressed and I never would have correlated it to my lifestyle because veganism is always painted as kind of this very pure kind of perfect program to be on. And especially with, you know, a lot of the documentaries, they talk so much about, you know, the environment and, you know, why we should care for the purpose of animals. But then when it comes to health, right, there's never really a balanced approach right? It's always veganism is the only way, plant-based lifestyle, go. But for every lifestyle, there's definitely consequences. And not all bodies are the same. And specifically when it comes to women and hormonal balance, you know, having outside sources of hormones is something that you need. And I didn't know that. And there's a lot of other stuff that I ended up finding out later on, but I don't want to get too far ahead of myself. So the catalyst of what really changed things for me, and this was around July of last year. So July of last year, I lost Artie. Um, so for those of you who know, Artie is or was a Norwich Terrier and just the sweetest little bundle of joy and very unexpectedly was diagnosed with a terminal illness and then just a few months later passed. And so, you know, the loss of a loved one, an animal is incredibly traumatic, I think, for anyone, but it really hit me, like, in a way that I wasn't expecting. And I remember about two weeks after he had passed that I started to experience this feeling of almost being high, of very, very dizzy, very lightheaded, and it kind of started softly, so to speak, and I would only kind of experience it at night. And then one day it just, I had severe vertigo. And if you've never experienced vertigo, it's like the world is spinning or you're on some kind of thing going in a circle, but it's, it's an incredibly, incredibly unsettling feeling to have. And I had that in these bouts and then it turned into constantly. And so I was having extreme dizziness and then other things started popping up. I felt my heart was going to like explode. I was having anxiety and headaches. I was having incredible pain in my pelvis and um, my allergies were out of control. I mean, it was literally like every single thing that could possibly go wrong suddenly was going wrong all at once. And the catalyst point had been the loss of puppy, which I didn't quite understand. And so as I kind of explained a decade Prior, I had gone through this whole journey and kind of fixed myself and found a cure and things had been pretty good for the majority of that. And then here I was, <laughs> once again, having all of these symptoms plus chronic fatigue, having a hard time getting out of bed and going to every doctor I could find, going to the ER, having my heart tested. And, uh, and even at one point through the process of elimination, right, you're checking your eyes, you're checking eternal organs and making sure you don't have some kind of organ failure happening. And as we kind of went through the checklist and everything was OK and they're like, you're so healthy, which is great news. But that's definitely one of the most frustrating things that you can hear as you're trying to diagnose yourself. And so at one point, I even was reflecting on losing my uncle a few years back um, and he died from brain cancer. And so I thought, you know, I was very worried because a lot of the dizziness and the head and, and some of the symptoms, because again, I'm like a master researcher <laughs> for everything. And that's just such a toxic thing to do because I had one of every symptoms, which means I must have one of every ailments, which must also mean brain cancer, right? So over the course of about three months from when this started, I went into self-diagnosis mode, right? So doctors couldn't help. They didn't know what was going on. And I first kind of went to, you know, cleansing. What have I been doing wrong? You know, maybe I have some kind of toxic chemicals in me. Maybe there's mold in the house, right? So process of 
elimination. And so for three months, I went on this pretty hardcore. A uh, part of it was a cleanse, right? So it was like a two week hardcore. I mean, hardcore, <laughs> awful. I never want to do it again. Kind of cleanse. And then from there, just kind of getting away from that, but then just being very, very clean with my eating. And so, of course, you know, through those three months, I lost a ton of weight, which definitely didn't help anything. And my symptoms were just as bad, if not worse, after that. And it got to this point where I just really wanted to give up um, because I couldn't make it through much of the day. I couldn't do much of anything. And, you know, a lot of the symptoms were really awful, but the one of the, the, the top tier ones was the dizziness and just not being able to think or see. So as an attorney and running a law practice, you know, what I do is I think, I use my brain. And so it was incredibly challenging not to even know where this was going, if I was going to ever get better. And so besides trying to just kind of function on a day-to-day -day basis, Everything as far as my passion projects, my music, anything creative, all that stopped. And so it really felt like my life was over. And it's not like I had, you know, suicidal thoughts or anything like that, but it became, I just can't go on anymore. I just can't do this, like for a single more day. And my heart definitely goes out to people who experience kind of unknown illnesses or any kind of illness where you're a prisoner in your body and that's that's a hundred percent what it felt like for me so through those first kind of three months that's what my life was and after those first three months i decided after just doing a lot of research i was like the one thing that i haven't looked at is my lifestyle is my diet right because i'm eliminating all this stuff i'm eliminating the toxins i'm about to shave my head because maybe there's a, you know toxins on my head from you know dyeing my hair um, and I just go, but the one thing that I'm not challenging or looking at is what I'm eating or not eating. And so I went down the research rabbit hole and I looked at a lot of testimonials from vegans who had been on the lifestyle long term, right? 15, 20 years, and even ones that had left it after like three to five years. And um, especially a lot of women explaining some of the symptoms that they were having, which were very similar to mine. And they go, well, I started to feel this stuff. And right away, I knew it was my diet. And I'm like, oh, crap, if this is what's cause this man, I feel kind of frustrated with myself because I didn't identify this earlier. But, and I go, I don't know if this is gonna make me better. And so I really just decided to try because I was at the point of no return, no other options. And I just felt like I had to try. And so the first night I went to Whole Foods and um, I definitely should have started easier, but you know, I just started with like some salmon. And it was tough because this, it was a whole shedding of my identity. <laughs> I was a failure <laughs> in my head, um, you know, that I couldn't do it right or I'd done it wrong. And, you know, but I, but I was at least trying to be strong enough for my future self. And I go, if this can help, then it's just something that I have to do. And so over the following couple of days, I started to try different things, right? So I tried a little bit of chicken. I tried a little bit of eggs. I like hit my brother. And I'm like, I have no idea how to cook any of this stuff, like help. <laughs> and even from the small amounts that I had tried, remember what I had just said? I had just been like cleansing for three months. So you can imagine that someone who hadn't eaten this stuff for almost a decade and then had just come off of some super cleansing. I mean, the bacteria in my gut was probably non-existent. <laughs> and so I got very sick. <laughs> and so on top of everything that I was already feeling, I then felt like I had the flu. Um, so it was a really not fun time. But, you know, I just believed that this could be the thing that could help. And so I just stuck with it. And so I very more slowly then tried to just, you know, little by little get used to it. And it took about a month. It took about a month before I wasn't kind of like sick to my stomach. And then I could kind of like eliminate using things like digestion enzymes, which, by the way, help a lot. And then there's the whole psychological component of it because, you know, some of it was just kind of grossing me out. It, it's just a whole other thing. I te you teach their own for me. It was, it was very tough. And it still took three months after I started to consume animal products again until I felt any difference, right? So for the, for the following 90 days, I still felt awful. I couldn't function, extreme dizziness, extreme fatigue neurological problems, right? So that's kind of the basis of the vertigo. But I just decided to kind of stay the path 
And three months later, it was just kind of like a switch went off, I guess. You know, one day I was like, oh, wow, I can kind of think a little more clearly today. And then a little bit of my energy came back. And each person is different. I have seen testimonials from long-term ex-vegans who, you know, basically like recovered within a week. And a lot of them had the same thing to say about as soon as I had, you know, the fish or the chicken or the steak, you know, something went off in my brain and, that, and these cravings just kind of took over because it's like my body knew what I needed. And I remember reflecting back on that. There have been times while I was vegan where just suddenly for like a week or for two weeks, I would just be craving salmon or I'd crave eggs. And I remember just being like, oh no, you know, it's because I'm deficient in something else. But I think there's something to be said of your body might know better than you and maybe your ethics, right? So if you're doing something not necessarily because of health or you think it's because of health, but it's more so for the ethics of why you're doing it. But in any case, what I can say is that when I started to have steak, I had that something went off in my brain <laughs> happen. And um, I remember just, you know, telling a number of people that I would just eat steak and then I would just be craving it like right after and the next day and the next day. And so I ended up, that became like my staple food. And then it felt like after those first three months, my recovery started to kind of go like this. And so I was seeing noticeable improvement. And while there still was really rough patches and there still are really rough patches, I've overall just been doing so much better. It's a night and day kind of thing. And so from my little clinical study of myself and just trial and error of trying to figure out this thing, that was the thing that fixed me. So at this point you might be asking, all right, so then what had happened? Is it just, you know, you're vegan and your body shuts down? Not really, sort of. So in my case, and something that a lot of long-term vegans report is basically adrenal fatigue. And adrenal fatigue can happen for a lot of reasons. A part of it is that you're just beating your body, right? We all do it. We're very high stress. We have things to do. And so because of that, you're putting a lot of pressure on your body anyway. But if you're not giving your body what it needs to recover, right, to combat that abuse, you can have some pretty serious diminishing returns, which is what happened in my case. And so I'm pretty sure I, there's different levels of adrenal fatigue. I'm pretty sure I hit like at level four, which I guess is the worst. Um, and because your adrenals give out multiple functions in your body, essentially start to shut down, right? So your reproductive system will start to shut down. That's why a lot of vegan women, like they lose their period. And I was very close to just completely losing my period by the end of my vegan journey. You start experiencing neurological issues. And so that'll be, for example, dizziness, vertigo, respiratory system starts shutting down, right? So I couldn't breathe. And I thought there was mold in my house. Lymphatic system, my, my lymph nodes were very, very inflamed, like I was sick constantly. And so unfortunately, adrenal fatigue is one of those things that takes probably many years to get to a place where you are having a hard time getting out of bed. And so therefore the solution is going to be a very slow kind of recovery process, which is what I'm in right now. Oh, it looks like the sun is shifting. Hold, please. All right, so hopefully you guys can see a little bit better. So it's been about coming up on eight months now since this all kind of started. And so that's why I wanted to kind of break down the timeline because I didn't feel like from what I was finding in my own research that I could readily figure out how long it was going to take. And that's one of the worst parts of any kind of recovery is just not knowing what's ahead and how long you know, your suffering is going to go on for. Part of the recovery process of, is, of course, just kind of ongoing learning and just understanding and trying different things with myself to get my strength up, to take in different forms of cholesterol, because that's a big one, right? You might get cholesterol, you can, on a plant-based diet, but what I've learned is that it's just wildly different when you get it from, example, eggs. And I've become a very big believer in ancestral eating, and that just our bodies are built a certain way. And if we don't give it what it needs, it starts to break down. And I believe that's what happened in my case. And another big piece of my learning is about bioavailability. And that although we eat plants and they are full of a tons of micronutrients and vitamins, that it's not necessarily going to be absorbed when you eat it because plants have their own defense against animals eating them. And so they have things to prevent the animals from 
consuming them. And so then we ingest it. And a good example is like beans, right? You might get a little gassy. And that's because of the lectins in the beans. And so conversely, when you have a grass-fed source of protein, the bioavailability of that is a lot higher. Your body can do a lot more with it. And guys, I mean, look, do your own research. Here's the thing. It's really tough when it comes to, you know, all of the information online because you can find doctors, you can find experts in every field to back up your walk of life, your way of life. And so I feel like my job today is just to kind of share my story and my own kind of clinical study on myself, on what happened, because there was a lot of time and effort. And I'm definitely the person who's like, you know, researched the ton out of everything. And also throughout my vegan journey, tons of supplementation and making sure that it was a balanced diet and making sure that I wasn't messing up because I'm just kind of neurotic like that. <laughs> and I want to make sure I'm doing a good job, but obviously it didn't work for me and things absolutely started to shut down. And so at this point, you know, it's been a decent amount of time, which is why I wanted to share kind of a status update, but I'm nowhere near fully recovered. I think that I probably have another six months to a year to go before I'm kind of back to a normal place consistently. But I will say that, you know, staying with whole plant-based foods and combining that with grass-fed butter and meats on a consistent basis, staying away from processed food, and that's a huge takeaway, right, of what I learned from being plant-based is that stay away from processed foods, stay away from fake sugars and anything that has extra crap in it. You know, these, these, these mainstream commercial companies really don't care about the general public. They're trying to make money and they're slowly killing us with what they put in our food. Looking at things like water, right? The source of water that we're consuming, the purity of the water, looking at our environment. If you're someone who wears makeup, looking at the toxicity of the makeup and maybe going to a brand that uses like, you know, fruits and veggies as the base of their products. So I feel like I'm now in a place where I've kind of fused my learning from plant-based living with now this kind of more ancestral diet and buying local, making sure everything is grass-fed. As someone who could not have dairy whatsoever since I was about 18, I've even gone so far as to get raw milk from a local dairy and, you know, it's easier in digestion. And I know some people might think that's a little crazy, but, you know, being able to drink that and having zero problems. And I'll add that since being on, I'll call it this, this new lifestyle, that I've been able to put on weight. I've gained 10 pounds. I've been able to finally start going to the gym because something else that happened was that after having these progressively worsening back conditions since starting law school, that adding on top of that, being sick, being in bed for many months definitely made it a whole lot worse. And so my recovery is not only from like the inside out, but it's also muscular. And so now recovering a lot of atrophy that happened. And so as I'm trying to now be disciplined, put on weight, put on muscle, go to the gym. It's been a very tough and painful process, but I'm very committed that, you know, I want to be a better version of myself. And I'm hoping that, you know, I can give you guys an update in another so many months or maybe in a year. And I can let you know and just be honest about what's happened because, you know, it's not so much of veganism is the best diet or, you know, F vegans, it's the worst thing ever. It's, it's not about that. It's about what's going to work and what potentially could be harmful. And, you know, ending up in the hospital and being in bed for three months is really awful. And if you have a family and you are running a business and you have, you know, staff to pay and other people are relying on you, there's a lot of reasons why it's good to take care of yourself, to take preventative measures. And that's really the purpose of this video, just to share my experience, maybe help you learn one or two things or inspire you to look into even what you're doing in your own lifestyle. All right, guys, I know that this is already an extremely long video. I'm, I'm sure I missed some stuff. And if you want to know any other pieces or you want me to go into more depth about stuff, I, something that helped me is that I ended up finding um, someone who had posted a video about the fact that she had been experiencing vertigo. And after roughly about 10 years, she had left the vegan lifestyle as well. And that was very inspiring to me. Just like reach out to her, get some information. What does she go through? Cause it's tough. It took me, after I started veganism, it took me about two years to transition onto the diet. <laughs> and then obviously as I was explaining, it takes time to transition 
off as well because your digestion is just so different. But the good news is that as long as you stay consistent, you'll be able to get to wherever you need to go. Oh, and I guess one more thing, I just realized that I didn't touch on kind of the animal ethics portion of this. So I just wanted to say that when I decided to become vegan, it was not for any animal ethical kind of obligation or reason. But being on the lifestyle, being in the community, I absolutely started to gain an ethical obligation, an understanding, appreciation, and love for animals, including, you know, ones that I adopted and ones that are like my children now. So I completely understand why so many people will make the decision to stay plant-based simply because they don't want to participate in the killing of animals. But what I've also found is that, you know, on this kind of circle of life and the need to have restorative agriculture to support local farmers and the importance of that on our environment, on kind of having a sustainable ecosystem. I've definitely learned a lot about that. I'm not an expert. I'm not going to dive into that because, you know, the reason for veganism was not animals. The reason now I'm transitioning out of veganism is also not because of animals. So I don't feel like I'm qualified to kind of speak on that. The purpose of today's video was just kind of offer from the health perspective what I've been through and why I made the decisions that I have. All right, guys, I'm going to get out of here. I'm excited because, you know, as things have been kind of picking up with my energy and just generally what's been going on with me, I'm finally getting back into music and I'm excited to be releasing more videos and just connecting with you. So if you need some help or you want to message me, the best place to do that is on Instagram, but you can definitely hit me up on any social media platform. If you haven't yet, be sure to subscribe, although I'm probably not going to be doing more Cooking Vegan with Miss Crystal videos. I definitely release a lot of music, music videos, and other lifestyle type content. So be sure to subscribe and turn on those bell notifications so you don't miss any videos. And here's to you staying happy and healthy. I'm Miss Crystal. Bye, guys.